Hi, this is Andrea Martelloni, and I will guide you through a study on percussive fingerstyle guitar that myself, Andrew McPherson, and Mathia Barthé did at the Centre for Digital Music at Queen Mary University of London. We will talk about what it is about percussive fingerstyle that we found interesting and relevant to Nime. We ran an interview study to know more about the creative process of modern acoustic guitar players, and we learned useful lessons in the design of augmented instruments, or Nime, to be played by the expert solo performer. Firstly, not all of you might be familiar with what percussive fingerstyle is. It is a set of performance techniques on the acoustic guitar which are highly visual and really enhance the presence of the guitar on stage. It was born out of the work by Michael Hedges in the mid-1980s. It has grown in popularity in the last decade and now it has a large following, a community and a set of established gestures. What is the purpose of this style? Well, we can hear it straight from the horse's mouth. With the acoustic, I am the band. As researchers in musical HCI, we could say it's a rethinking of the guitar's affordances to enhance solo performance and convey the same quantity of musical information that you would expect from a full band. That got us thinking. Is this practice really different to other types of virtuoso practice, and if so, how? And why has this practice grown out of the constraints of the guitar's body and has not leveraged augmented instruments or even purpose-built nines? And how does this practice relate to what is documented in Nime literature about finding unexpected affordances? We wanted to get a first-hand account of percussive fingerstyle practice from the players themselves. We ran a series of interviews with five proficient fingerstyle players. They represent a small but diverse sample in nationality, musical background and gender, each of them presenting a different compositional style. They all had varying familiarity with digital music technologies, but none of them has been involved in Nime so far. We made them perform a song of their own composition. We talked about how they perceive their technique and how they arrange their music. Then we ran an ideation session, gathering ideas about the features of an augmented guitar that the players would find at ease using on stage. We also had a little surprise for them, which we'll talk about in a bit. Seeing them play was great to start observing their gesture vocabulary and their patterns of interaction. The technique is very varied and nuanced, but on a crude and generic level, it seems to follow a three-zone pattern. It's quite easy for the hand to do wrist movements on the body which sound a bit like a kick drum. A hit with four other fingers sounds more like a snare. The thumb can afford a more tonal sound, which can do as tom or as an embellishment. This scheme repeats in three positions. Close to the soundboard, the strings can still be plucked and they give the snare sound a bit more grit. On the lower shoulder, the bass drum sounds deeper. The upper shoulder is a good compromise and the strings can still be easily reached. What are the points of view of the artists on their practice? They talked about percussive fingerstyle as a means to push the guitar to centre stage and give it an identity as a solo instrument rather than a quote-unquote campfire instrument. Their secondary aim is to keep their experience self-contained without relying on doors or studio time to achieve a full arrangement. Interestingly, imitating other instruments didn't seem to be as important as a more abstract sort of completeness and refinement. Their compositions grow around the guitar, the pieces are composed directly on the instrument and different techniques are glued together to create grooves, soundscapes and then songs. Alternate tunings, imitating techniques of other string players and a healthy amount of trial and error are all ingredients of the creative process. At this point our surprise for the participants was that we asked them to play the same piece they played at the start but on a guitar wrapped in bubble wrap. They weren't able to use the body for percussive sounds anymore. We wanted to see the process of finding new gestures in action and see how they would work around such an obvious constraint. The results were really dependent on how much the technique of the player relied on body sounds. Some participants just carried on almost like normal, whereas others had to reinvent their technique from the ground up and they said they were hindered by the reference in sound and muscle movements given by the original composition. Ultimately, the best lesson we could learn from this experience is that guitar percussion happens as much on the body as it does on the strings, 
and the two interactions aren't necessarily so separable. We then gathered suggestions from our participants on what they would like an ideal augmented instrument to do for them. A popular request was to enhance the dynamic range of percussive hits. Sounds made with a lot of effort on the guitar's body don't end up all sounding loud, and it's even more difficult to be subtle and dynamic when hitting a piece of wood. Selective effects on certain techniques were also deemed a good idea. Different reverbs or sound overlays on, for example, harmonics as opposed to plucked notes. Boulder's suggestions even included virtual AI instruments as long as they would be coupled with some kind of visual stage presence. Our participants were also vocal in what they didn't want to see in a musical interface. They prefer finding all the possibilities of an interface with a few simple affordances, and they found complicated interfaces actually less flexible than simple ones. Some of them said how they wanted to be fully in control of the here and now. They liked being spontaneous with their performance, rather than moulding it around automated sounds, for example with a looper or a sequencer. Finally, one player was aware of how she used some gestures to communicate with the audience, or herself, get lost in the piece. It's what we call ancillary gestures. She was not interested in making those gestures sound producing, and advised us to preserve the intangible choreography of the musician. So what picture do those findings paint? We were looking for a feature that would distinguish percussive fingerstyle from other types of virtuoso practice. We observed a prime example of what Tom Mutt calls material-oriented interaction, where the instrument is an instigator and a collaborator in the formation of creative output. The compositions end up being unavoidably influenced by the guitar's instrumental space, which is a term that Jonathan D'Souza uses to indicate which notes or sounds the instrument does most willingly. Inevitably, the creative output will sound idiomatic, in other words, moulded around the instrument's easiest affordances. However, guitar players have a way to change their instrumental space through the use of alternate tunings. This is also documented by the Sousa. It was described to him by jazz guitarist Kurt Rosenwinkel as an act of voluntary self-sabotage, to avoid writing music that sounded too idiomatic. Percussive guitarists instead embrace this feature of the guitar, and they choose the tunings to control it across their compositions. The tuning will define the idioms, and in turn the quality and the colour of the piece. The other main theme from our study is appropriation, the development of a working relationship with a tool that wasn't the one intended by its designers. This is a crucial theme in Nime. Victor Zappi, Michael Gervich and others all observed how musicians tend to find unexpected affordances around a highly constrained instrument. This will explain our participants' preference for a simpler, self-contained interface. However, the type of control they expect within those constraints is crucial. Let's think about the request for enhanced dynamic range in percussive controls, their criticism of loopers, and their restraint in using the kind of controllers that are ubiquitous in electronic music. Those players seem to be quite drawn to the idea of microdiversity, which is what distinguishes two different interpretations of the same piece. In exploring microdiversity, Sergei Jordan notes that it arises from the finely grained and predictable control over the instrument. The expert musician must be able to predict the state of their instrument at any given time, regardless of how non-linear the mapping between the gestures and the sound may be. On the other hand, the Nime community is also contributing to another brand of virtuosity, one that encompasses the negotiation with unpredictability, chaos and surprise. We wonder if there's a subset of Nime practice, a sort of percussive fingerstyle Nime, that embraces this idea of finding unexpected affordances in our tools as a fundamental element of the practice. In this context, it's even hard to define how an affordance is really unexpected, as the Nime practitioner is oftentimes also the Nime designer. A designer also has the ability to go back to the drawing board and embed a new affordance into an instrument, instead of exploring how to circumvent an immutable interface. We would like to make these observations a part of future studies and hopefully the object of some offline discussions in this conference. From our study, we were able to describe percussive fingerstyle as a type of material-oriented musical interaction. What is unique to this style is the process of bending the instrumental space of the guitar, the constant search for new affordances and the idea of making this ongoing pursuit a part of the composition. Our hypothesis is that rich, predictable control within few immediately apparent degrees of freedom should form the basis for future augmented guitars, or also nimes that are supposed to facilitate this creative process. We will try to implement some of the suggestions we received, 
such as a system to give hits more dynamic expression, as research probes, we will see how they confirm or challenge this design constraint. We'd like to thank our participants, all great guitar players I would love you to listen to. Thank you for listening.